Time now for the Town Talker with Reverend Zechariah A. Jackson. Reverend Jackson is founding pastor of the Church of What's Happening Now, located in Plainfield, New Jersey. And now, the Town Talker, Reverend Zechariah Jackson. Oh, people out there, it's so good coming to you, you know. Um, it was so cold this morning, I thought we were headed back to winter. But I know that uh, spring is about 20 days away, 22 days away or something, so we can't wait. You know, man had his way. We would just, after Christmas, go right to the summer. We go just skip spring and skip all the groundhog and all those other things. We go right, we go right for the summer. My mother used to say, she used to say, son, if a man had his way, he would make his face over every day. Sometime he walked the street looking like a brick because that would be the style. Thank God God didn't give us that strength. Today we have, and I'm so happy to have these folks with us today, Catholic Charities. Uh, children grow best in families, and I believe that to be true. You know, um, I got interested in this um, venture of bringing these people on the show, Catholic Charities, some time ago, um, when I was in a conversation with some young people that was using words like, well, when I get 18, I get emancipated. I said, <laughs> <laughs> what plantation you from? I didn't know where they were coming from. The master plantation, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Something going on around here I don't know nothing about. <laughs> so it um, then finding out that a lot of them was through foster parents and foster uh, child care and things of that nature, then getting a real understanding of the terminology and the things that they use. So um, today uh, we thank God for giving us strength. Oh, Lord, give us strength to walk through the valley of misunderstanding to come within your equal rim of balance and order despite our deficiencies. Yea, Lord, we are lost people, but through your mercy and grace you found us, guided us, and have directed our path. Oh, thank you, Lord, and, and may you help us and help the people out there to get understanding that this here, too, is an important, very important issue. Catholic Charities. I'm going to let the young ladies introduce themselves. I'm going to turn Right, because this first one I met was the lady on the right. Now, will you introduce yourself? Hello, good afternoon. My name is Cynthia Anna Maria, and I'm a recruiter for, again, Catholic Charities. Okay, now I'm going to turn to the left, because I met you second. So go ahead. <laughs> it works for me. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Krell, and I'm also a recruiter for Catholic Charities for the foster care program. At this moment in time, what, what is actually going on today with the, with the Catholic Charities, with the, uh, the uh, kids and things? Uh, well, what Catholic Charities is trying to do is recruit um, safe, loving foster homes for kids. There's about 11,000, 12,000 kids in the system that are in out-of-home placements. What we're trying to do is find those people out there who are willing to open up their hearts and their homes and care for the children. Okay. Well, can you explain the difference between uh, adopting the kids and actually just taking them in as foster care? For the um, goal for foster care is to reunite them with the birth families. That's the goal. That's the goal. Oh, okay. So in other words, it's not if someone taking them in, it's, it's not going to be a continuous thing. Maybe a year, maybe whatever it may be. That's one of the hardest questions to know. Um, we don't really know. Each child is different. Each okay. case is different. Um, it is important for the foster parent to know that there basically is a safe house. We're basically giving these children love. Um, at home while their parents or birth families are getting help. There's a new thing also. There's a big reform within foster care to keep kids connected to who they are and where they came from okay. versus coming into the system and not knowing where their parents are, where their siblings are, or anything about their life prior to coming into foster care. Okay. So a new goal is to keep kids connected to their families, their communities, maybe it's teachers, best friends, anyone in their life prior to coming into foster care. And also for foster essentially becoming a resource to everyone in that child's life. So if a child's working up towards reunification, having conversations through letters or phone calls with birth parents, sure. so that maybe the child's not living in your home, but you can still be a contact in the future for the child and also for the parent. Okay, now that right there is a little bit confusing for me. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> Explain that a little bit better than that. Um, You're saying that uh, I would take the child in and then I become like a buddy-buddy system, some kind of friend or ally or something of that nature. At some point through the process, you there's a possibility that the child, when they're working towards reunification with their parent, they're going to go for visits. 
okay. they're going to be seeing their parent. And then there's a struggle there for those kids that this is my mom and I really love her, or sure. my dad, and this is my foster mom, this is the person, or my dad, who's caring for me. Sure, sure. So if they can get along, I can love both of them. Oh, okay. um, and even after reunification, let's say um, a, a birth father is reunited with his son and he has to work late. Well, maybe he can call the previous foster parent and say, hey, you mind watching the child instead of leaving them by themselves, okay. which is maybe what happened in the past. Oh, all right. Well, that right there may be a little difficult because I know that you hear these stories where the foster parents get attached. Mm -hmm. And what do you guys do in a case like that when you get attached? If you had, in fact, I, I just seen something on TV not too long ago where it was a Chinese baby and the family had grown very attached. And then years later, you know, I think maybe 10, 10 11 years old, the family came back and took the, 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 the girl away from them. And, you know, it was heartbreaking to see that right, right. there. You know? Well, I mean, the biggest thing for families to keep in mind when they're doing foster care is it is it's not a permanent thing. Yeah. It You're helping a child through a really rough period in their life. And the hope through the new reform is that kids are going to be able to stay connected to foster parents because they've made such an impact on their lives. Now, as far as if it came to a point that um, parental rights were terminated, then a child would be adopted. So if, if a child's actually adopted, parents might not come back okay. in now, the future. What, what kind of support do you guys offer the foster parents? Okay. Um, in terms of, let me just feed this out to the, to the audience. In terms of psychological support, where they are at at every minute that the kids are there, that they know that the kids are not going to become permanent. I mean, because it's easy to be, you know, get close. That's one. Of, um, it's a good thing you mentioned that. Um, that's one of the biggest concerns about parents um, calling in an interest in learning about foster care. Uh, we do provide training. Okay. Uh, every foster care has to go through training. It's called Pride Training. Um, it's about 30 hours, and they basically, um, they talk about continuity, the losses, the different losses that you may go through, that the child went through. Sure. Um, and it's very, it's very, um, very helpful. It focuses on permanency, continuity for the child, um, keeping connected to birth parents and families, maybe can be grandparents, like she mentioned, aunts, uncles, teacher. Um, and, and just talk about different, just to see the situation in a different way. But well, you know, and I mean that I, I hear what you're saying in terms of uh, the extended family, cousins, aunt, and, and things of that nature. But perhaps maybe, and we just you know throwing this out so people can get a clear mm -hmm. view of what's really going on. If you're a foster parent, and then there's an uncle that's close, or you know, cousin or whatever, then maybe you think like you know, from a human perspective, then why didn't they step up and take them? Well, you know? that's something that they're when a child is placed in your home. Let's just take from the say the infant stage. A child, a um, person gives birth to a child. Sure. There's drug. Most of our babies are, have been exposed to drugs or alcohol at some point. So once a child's born with that exposure, the, the state would take that child into okay. their custody. Um, at that point, if the baby is medically cleared to leave the hospital, they don't want to leave that child in the hospital sure. while they're saying, oh, where's an aunt, where's an uncle? So at that point, they would take the child into foster care they would look for an aunt or an uncle at that point, but they're also going to make sure that that aunt, uncle, grandparent meets standards and that that also is, in fact, a safe situation for that child to also okay. be in. So it may take five months to make sure that, you know, Uncle Joe can care But in child. five months, and I'm only keeping it real, right. in five months, in five months, I mean, a little baby, in yeah. five months, you know, <laughs> I'm going to be very attached. I don't know where um, I'm going to let, let the kid go. Well, I think that, you know, <laughs> you, know, you can't go. <laughs> throughout the process, you also will have either a counselor or a clinician in your home. Now, what is a clinician? A clinician is a master's level clinician who works with our school age children okay. who does in-home counseling. And our counselors are just our border baby counselors who are coming and meeting with the family and trying to find out, is everything going all right with this infant? Because sure. they can't speak for themselves. Sure, sure. And they're, they're kind of like a buddy to the foster parents and like a best friend who can you can call no matter what for anything. And they're going to also constantly be reminding you you're helping the child through this period. It's not permanent. There's yes. a chance it could be permanent. Um, there's also always, um, 
through the process, you're kind of letting you know from start to we found an uncle. The uncle's going.